Good morning and a blessed Sabbath to all, and welcome to Sabbath at Home. I trust that you are all well, and as we all know that the war against the COVID-19 is not yet over, but despite of that, we still have all the reasons to be thankful and be grateful to God for His continued blessings and protection. Friends, to start, let us bow our heads for the word of prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, we are so grateful for this opportunity that you have given us to worship you through this virtual meeting. Thank you, Lord, for your continued guidance and protection that you have provided us. Thank you also for um, allowing us to experience joy in our hearts despite of what is going on. And so, Lord, today we ask for the presence of the Holy Spirit to be in our hearts and in our minds as we listen to your word once again. Lord, please bless this worship today. In Jesus' name, Amen. The key text for our worship today is found in John 10, 37 to 38. It says, If I do not do the works of my Father, do not believe me. But if I do them, though you don't believe me, believe the works, that you may know and understand that the Father is in me, and I in the Father. You know, during his earthly ministry, Jesus Christ performed miracles by touching, healing, and transforming the lives of people. And his miracles have been reported by eyewitnesses. The four Gospels record 37 miracles of Jesus, and the Gospel of Mark recorded most of them. We believe that Jesus was capable of performing those miracles. In fact, those miracles of restoring people's lives from disastrous condition, or perhaps illnesses, or even death, were actually serve as a foretaste of a kingdom that God was about to establish. You know, God promised that He will restore all things that were marred by sin. And Jesus showed us what restoration is like. And so today, as we explore the miracles of Jesus, let us concentrate on one question today. Why did Jesus do the miracles He did Apostle John uses a different word to refer to miracles than other gospel writers used. For John, he called them signs. As you know, John did not write a chronological gospel. He wrote a theological gospel. In other words, he arranged the events of his book for a single purpose as set out in John 20, 31, which says, But these have been written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in His name. You know, he wrote for one reason, so that his contemporaries would accept that Jesus is the Son of God, and to believe that Jesus was the long-awaited Messiah. When they came to believe in Jesus as the Son of God and the Messiah, then they would be ready to experience eternal life through His name. Because of John's purpose, he selected seven of Jesus' miracles that proved Jesus' divinity and Messiahship. Knowing how John used them is one thing. Knowing why Jesus performed them is another. And so the question is, did Jesus perform miracles so that people would believe he was the Messiah? Friends, our text today seems to indicate that the answer could be yes. In John 10, 37 to 38, we read again, Jesus said, if I do not do the works of my Father, do not believe me. But if I do them, though you don't believe me, believe the works, 
that you may know and understand that the Father is in me, and I in the Father. Certainly, he is saying that actions speak louder than words. He said that his works show that he is in the Father, and the Father is in him. But does that mean that his motives were to prove his divinity and messiahship through the works? Or is that just a byproduct of the miracles? Though we won't study all the miracles today, we will read enough of them to learn four reasons why Jesus did miracles. Friends, one reason was out of necessity. Remember the story when Mary and Jesus were at the wedding feast at Cana and the host ran out of wine? Mary asked Jesus to do something about it. And Jesus replied to his mother, Woman, what do I have to do with you? My hour has not come yet. You know, his mother said to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. Jesus showed some hesitation here because he said that his time had not come yet. But Mary had faith in him to do something about the situation and told the servants to do whatever Jesus told them to do. And of course, the end result was that Jesus turned the water from the pots into the best wine the crowd had ever tasted. Now, why did Jesus perform the miracle? It was out of necessity and because his mother asked him to. Other times, Jesus used his miracles to teach. Like the time he calmed the storm toast sea. In Matthew 8, 23 to 27, it says, And when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great storm in the sea, so that the boat was covered with the waves. But he himself was asleep. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Save us, Lord, we are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you timid, you men of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and it became perfectly calm. And the man marveled, saying, What kind of a man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Friends, certainly this miracle pointed to his divine powers, but it did more than that. It actually taught the disciples a lesson about faith. Other times, Jesus was not trying to evoke faith, but he performed miracles in response to faith. A prime example is found in Matthew 9 verses 1 to 8 that says, And getting into a boat, he crossed over and came to his own city. And behold, they were bringing to him a paralytic lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said to the paralytic, Take courage, my son. Your sins are forgiven. And behold, some of the scribes said to themselves, This fellow blasphemes. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why are you thinking evil in your hearts? For which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven, or to say rise and walk? But in order that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, 
Then he said to the paralytic, Rise, take up your bed and go home. And he rose and went home. But when the multitudes saw this, they were filled with awe and glorified God, who had given such authority to men. Jesus saw the faith of the man that brought the paralytic to him. And he forgave the man's sins. Now the religious leaders didn't like what they saw and they began mumbling among themselves, accusing Jesus of blaspheming because only God can forgive sins. Now, they didn't like Jesus' suggestion that he was God. But because Jesus is God, he knew what they were thinking. And he said to them, in essence, what is easier, to say some words or to perform a miracle? Anyone can say the words, but not everyone can perform a miracle. And so friends, the reason for this miracle was straightforward. And that is in response to the people's faith and to demonstrate that Jesus had the authority to forgive sin. According to the scripture, the man immediately took up his bed and walked. Still other times, Jesus performed a miracle because the person's situation touched his heart and he had compassion on them. In Matthew 14 verse 14 says, And when he went ashore, he saw a great multitude and felt compassion for them and healed their sick. And also in Mark 8 verses 2 and 3 shows that it was Jesus' compassion for the people that led to the miracle. It says, I feel compassion for the multitude because they have remained with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away hungry to their home, they will faint on the way. And some of them have come from a distance. Friends, we cannot fully understand why Jesus performed miracles until we examine a couple of times that he refused to do them. You know, when the devil tempted him in the wilderness, Jesus refused to prove that he was the Son of God by doing a miracle. In Matthew 4, verses 5 to 7 says, Then the devil took him into the holy city, and he had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will give his angels charge concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up. List you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, On the other hand, it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Jesus declined to prove Satan anything. He definitely would not be performing on time. You know, friends, Jesus did not perform miracles so that we would know he was God. He actually did them because he was God. He was not trying to prove anything. He was just being himself. Another time he refused to perform a miracle was when the soldiers came to the garden to arrest him. Peter took a sword and attacked the soldiers. But Jesus healed the man's ear that Peter cut off then ask Peter a question. In Matthew 26 verses 52 to 53 it says, Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for 
all those who take up the sword shall perish by the sword. Or do you think that I cannot appeal to my father and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? You know, friends, it is the restraint of Jesus, not his performance of miracles that actually gives us the reason he did the miracles he did. In this text, he refused because doing the miracles would have been counterproductive to his mission, and that is to be the savior of the world. You know, whether we like it or not, Jesus had to fall into the hands of the soldiers and he had to die on the cross. Friends, without the cross, there could be no resurrection. And without the resurrection, there could be no eternal life. When miracles don't come, when miracles don't happen to us, it doesn't mean that God has forsaken us. You know, God is all-knowing. He knows the end from the beginning. And in fact, God's sovereignty is not measured on the amount of miracles He performs for His people. You know, friends, in the darkness of unanswered prayer, you may be tempted to give up on God. You may feel like throwing in the towel and checking out of the Christian life. But my question is, what good will that do? If you turn away from God, where will you go? But if you stay on the course in the darkness, eventually the light will shine again and you will be glad that you did not turn away in the moment of disappointment. Friends, brothers and sisters, in the end, that will be the testimony of every child of God. When we finally get to God's kingdom, we will look back over the pathway of life and see that through all the twists and turns and seeming detours, God made not one mistake. Yes, we see dimly now as we march on through the shadows of life. But the day will come when the sunlight of God's love surrounds us as we stand in the presence of Jesus who loved us and gave himself for us. Until then, we move on through the twilight, knowing that some of our prayers will not be answered, no matter how hard we pray. No miracles, no matter how hard we pray. But friends, this fact sustains us on our long journey home. Jesus did not say, my answers are sufficient, but rather, my grace is sufficient for you. And so friends, regardless what life throws ahead of us, let us not lose our grip on our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, that you have revealed your love to us today. Thank you for those wonderful stories of miracles that Jesus performed while he was still here on earth. Thank you, Lord, that he showed us what it means to be safe and what it means to be restored. Lord, we cannot wait for that great day to come when Jesus comes again. And he will bring a total restoration of everything that has been marred by sin. Lord, as we wait for that day, may the Holy Spirit will stand close to us, to baptize us, to encourage us, to uplift us, and to help us to be more faithful unto you until that day comes. Thank you for hearing 
and answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, Amen. Folks, brothers and sisters, it is my prayer that all of you will be well. And so stay strong and stay safe. God bless.